Okay, first question. What attracted you to the role of Jod? Big question, really. Um, so many things in that, obviously it wasn't just the role of Jod, it was the role of Jod in a Star Wars series and the opportunity to work with all these incredible directors and see behind the curtain of this universe. So, to go right back, being seven or eight and seeing the first Star Wars film in the cinema was a very, for not just a, you know, it was a formative memory of what film was and the impact film had on me as a child, uh, as for so many. And, you know, no one had ever seen anything like it. And so that informed the next sort of eight years of my life as a kid, playing, interacting, imagining. So it had a huge impact and sat in a really special place in my heart, again, as with so many people. Um, so being approached to be in the world, you know, I was, as I said, I was really intrigued to see how this universe is made, how this aesthetic is achieved, and getting round to it, there's this amazing role. You know, the role, I, I was so excited by the opportunity to play someone so mysterious and kind of all things to all people. Um, so they, they looked like just so much potential. Um, and that's always, you know, very attractive. And I loved the concept. I loved the idea, the simple idea of returning for me to that boy who saw the film the first time, but making them the protagonists. Putting, putting their eyes of awe and innocence and fear, you know, to see them seeing this world, I just thought was simple and just such a clever, clever idea. I love it. So you would say you are a fan of Star Wars. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, in general terms, tell us a little about Jod and how he fits in the story. So the, the young ones meet Jod having blasted off from their home planet and are really looking for anyone who will, you know, give them some sense of hope of returning. And he offers his services. Now, some of the team, some of the gang are a little skeptical. Some are just wide-eyed in wonder, believing that he's, you know, good. In fact, that he's a Jedi. And he sees some kind of angle with them. I think he sees some opportunity there um, of, you know, getting something out of it. I think he's someone who lives day by day by day and slowly you realize he actually is on the run from certain people and maybe owes things to other people. Um, and that's not to say he's not, he's not, he's bad, but he, he's complicated. Um, and he's the kid's guide, but he learns from them just as much as they learn from him. And I think what's key to it is also that he doesn't see them as kids. He, I don't think he doesn't really understand what kids are. He doesn't understand innocence because I don't know that he had it in his own life. So to to him, they're small adults, and it makes the relationship both sort of honest and and also um, I can't keep coming back to the word complicated, but you know, honest but also tough. I love that. Um, you touched on this. What what it would. Tell us what it was like to work with the different episode directors, John Watts, David Lowry, the Daniels, Jake, Bryce, and Lee Isaac Chung. What made it a unique experience for you? Um, unique, of course, because well, I'd never worked with a, a group of directors over uh, a period of time like that, so, so in such quick succession. I'd, I'd never had that experience. Unique because I mean, all of them incredibly talented and clear and experienced. And yet all coming into this world, um, bringing their own, um, totally their own like detail and pers perspective. Um, and, and directors bring different energies to a set. Like they run them in different ways. Um, and their pers personality and their energy sort of affects the mood of the set. So it's always interesting, you know, having a new energy and a new um, uh, leader, really, um, af af affecting the, uh, the, the, the set in that way. Um, 
And may, can I just say, with that question, I mean, what a group of directors. I mean, when, when I, it wasn't also a case of, okay, oh, I get to um, work with a series over a, in quick succession on a Star Wars show. It was also, each, each of these directors brought something so extraordinary, and they're so talented, that it was, it was also a lesson every time. Like, okay, oh, this is how they do it. This is how she does it. This is how he does it. You know, just intriguing. Um, Skeleton Crew has been called a universal adventure. How would you describe the tone of the story? Did any of the theme resonate with you as you were making the episodes? A universal adventure is a bright. How would I describe the tone? Did you say the tone? The tone. Yeah. Uh, the th yes, the tone yeah. of the story and the theme resonate with you as I you think, were making I think the tone it. is captured when you think of, 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 of this idea of a child, an innocent child, looking at this universe that the, 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 the fans know so much about. It's, it's exciting, it's thrilling, you know, it has a sense of awe and wonderment, but it's also got jeopardy mm. and, and risk. And the risk is real, you know. Um, and so th all of that comes to play um, and then because it's through the eyes of children, it's also got a sense of playfulness mm -hmm. and joy, which I think is really refreshing. Quite honestly, the, the theme that I've just described, like I said, I was so moved by this concept. I thought it was such a simple, strong concept. And it was something that drew me to the cinema as a kid and something I, I still feel as, as an adult, really, when I go to the movies. You see something good in the movies, um, it can move you. Uh, and and in and at times take you back to your child, the child inside you, and so I think seeing that in the crew and the cast uh, really really uh, affected me. Um, and then my last question: What do you hope viewers experience when they watch Skeleton Crew? I hope that old fans really are touched by the the sense of wonderment and magic that we all felt when we maybe first encountered Star Wars. I hope the new young fans are as excited and invited into this world that has impressed and just in, inspired me for so many years, 40 something years. Um, and I hope they find it thrilling. I think it, there's wonderful thrill, uh, thrilling energy to it. Thank you so much. Pleasure. That was awesome. Please describe your character. You each can take it. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, don't worry. My character is a very loyal best friend. He is the think twice of the group kind of guy. Um, I think he is a very scared person. I think he does not want to be there, but he also <laughs> doesn't want to uh, disappoint his friends. And I just think he is just there for everybody, too, if they're in, you know, if they're sad, if they're happy, you know, whatever. Wim to me is such sorry, Wim, Wim to me is such a dreamer, and um, I admire his imagination and dedication. You know, uh, his imagination is so strong because he doesn't have a mom and his dad is constantly working, so he's left to make his own fun. And I think that's something so special. And he he acknowledges that this test is really stressing him out, and he acknowledges that Neil doesn't want to he he doesn't want to fail to be. So that he wouldn't have to, you know, suffer. So that Neil wouldn't have to suffer because of him. And he acknowledges that. And he, he's, he's just really stressed. And that's what motivates him to want to go off-world in a way. Because, um, you know, every the pressure, it's just the build-up, the build-up, the build-up. It's getting too much. And, you know, it's just it's a lot for him. So, hi, I play Fern. Um, Fern's really outgoing and bold. And she's not afraid to say what she thinks is right. Um, she likes speeder bikes. Um, to me, she's like kind of like a Han Solo of the group. Um, she's not afraid to fight, and she's she kind of has like a sense of humor that I love, but she loves speeder bikes, and I love ATVs, and we definitely share that. It was definitely fun <laughs> doing that, like racing on them. But yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I play KB, and KB is like more quiet and on the introverted side. Um, she's very thoughtful and resourceful, and she has like special powers because of like her augs and her visor, which come in handy with the group. 
but when I was playing and figuring out my role, I was I was like figuring out a combo between how robotic and like cyborg like I should be. And I actually had like a talk with John and he, he let me he gave me the creative freedom to kinda make the character my own and kinda create it. And yeah, it was really amazing how just everyone gave you the freedom to just work. Yeah. What did you like best about your characters and why? I feel like I'm starting to watch <laughs> you can it. Find it. Um, I think the thing I just like, I just think he's, I mean, I know this is going to sound weird, but like, I just think he's really cute and I just kind of like that about him. <laughs> and I just think he's kind of just like, he's a diva, okay? He's a diva. Um, and he, and I just think he shows up and he does his thing and then he leaves. <laughs> oh, yeah. Attitude. Walk off. Exactly. Anyway. Um, go for it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, what I love about my character, she's very cool. And to prepare for the role, I actually did like a lot of running and like exercise and different archery, parkour. Can you get a flex? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's okay, guys. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. But that's what I love about her. I like that she's really cool. And she might not like always vocalize her opinion, but she gets things done, which I love about her. I, what am I, what's something I find really admirable about Fern is like she really cares about the people that she she fights for and she'll fight for them and she, you know what I kind of took from her was kind of her confidence and even in real life like I definitely like it was kind of like a lesson to me and I definitely take that and like now it's just like she's helped me a lot and like <laughs> I just I love how Wim represents the hero's journey archetype, so to speak, and um, I love, I love his character arc throughout the show. It's so, it's been so fun to uh, play around with because from point A to point B, it's such a drastic change. And um, it's, I, that's always, I love playing around with that for my characters and uh, any character that I play. Uh, I love the initial, um, the initial preparation process when I first receive the material. I find things that seem familiar. And um, yeah, really just the, the preparation process was really fun fun for me, discovering all of Wim's, you know, qualities. Um, I love how adventurous he is and how this adventure really changes him. And because he thought that the galaxy was all fighting lightsabers, coolness, fun, but then he gets a quick reality check and he realizes it's not all that, you know, all that he thought it was and it changes him. It's okay. <laughs> Tell us about working with Jude Law and what you like most about working with him. Jude is so present and so giving and in the moment for us, like, he's so, like, grounding and, like, when I would, when I would have a scene with him, like, it made me, like, act better because he, like, he gives so much to you to work off of, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I... 100% agree. He's such a generous scene partner. Yeah, he's giving, he's grounded, he's constantly focused, which helps, sorry, which helps uh, other people focus. And, uh, you know, he's so, he not only is he such a nice guy, but he's so experienced, which makes for some really fun scenes with him. Playing, uh, uh, working alongside him is a lot of fun, and uh, I, I would love to work with him again. He's really motivating because he's such a good actor, and he, he's very giving. Like, when I was doing a scene with him for the first time, it was like, it was amazing, and I was fangirling, and it, it was really a great um, experience to work with such a great actor. Yeah. I mean, I have always seen his like stuff before, and you know, I just remember like seeing him be like, oh, that's pretty cool. But then when you're like really there and he's doing it in front of you, you're like, wow, this is like hardcore, you know? Like, it was it was really kind of like whoa, like, and he, he's really just kind of brilliant. It, like, it really kind of amazed me, and it truly, truly made me a great. A better actor, and um, and he th I think he was just kind of a mentor a little bit too, because I remember there was even a day where like I was like where I was like you know we were talking about like something with like like ladies and stuff. I was and I was like oh yeah you have to have the good looks and he was like yeah but you also have to have charm and I just remember taking oh that God. note. <laughs> All right, well I'll see. Thank you, Jude. Thank, thank, thank you, Jude. Thank you. 
Um, tell us about the sets. What was your favorite one and why? Our oh, ship bro. was really, really cool. Okay. I remember the Definitely. first day that we went there and like everything you could actually interact with, like all the so buttons. So practical, yeah. Like were practical, yeah. like they were real and like le levers. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was one of the coolest sets I've ever seen. And like the volume, all the sets were real and huge too, I might add. Mm. I would have to agree with that. The ship was so cool. And like the, oh my gosh, the buttons were so much fun. <laughs> It was so practical and the sets were so unique. All of the different sets uh, were so much fun. The practical sets, the non-practical sets, they're all so different. And I'd never really done anything like this, so it was so exciting and so surreal. I wish we could have done the ASMR. Yeah, I know. Oh my gosh. That would have been so satisfying. The ship was like, it was really cool because it was all life sized. And you could, it actually went all the way around all the different rooms, which was really yeah. cool. Yeah. Interesting. Last question. If you could describe Skeleton Crew in one word, what would it be and why? Either adventure or journey. But I'm going to go with uh, journey here. I'm going to go with action packed. Exciting. <laughs> Neil. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> fun. Fun? Yes. And why would you say that about it? I would just say because it's an adventure and it's fun and it's just, you, you have a great time watching it too, so I think mm -hmm. it's just fun in that way. It's a journey for you. Yeah. As yeah. well as it's a journey for the character, it's also a journey for you. You're going on this as journey with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And you're kind of, you're kind of viewing it through their, through, through the children's eyes and that's what's so special because children uh, leading a Star Wars series or Star Wars anything Star Wars related is so cool because you know we haven't really seen that too much and children bring a certain like wide eye wonder to the galaxy that I feel like adults may not always and that's what was so special it was really fun we, have some, we had a great stunt team and action we really did. sequences so yeah the action scenes were really fun too mm -hmm. definitely I say exciting because I feel like there's always something happening like you never get bored because yeah there's just yeah there's always something happening how did you come up with the idea for Skeleton Crew and what inspired your vision? So how did we come up with the idea for Skeleton Crew and what inspired it? I think the inspiration for me is the feeling of being a 10 year old kid and wandering off into a field and hoping that you're gonna stumble across some sort of adventure. And you know, the movies that we grew up with, you'd find a buried pirate's treasure or you get abducted by aliens or something like that. You know, that's what I always hoped would happen to me. And to turn that into a show where a group of kids are all sort of longing for adventure and end up sucked into the Star Wars galaxy. Yeah, and then that adventure leads to an actual adventure, which is yeah. really <laughs> scary and dangerous, <laughs> and they're in way over their heads. Yeah, so being a bored 10-year-old kid, I think, is the... And getting in trouble. <laughs> and getting in trouble. When does the story take place in the Star Wars timeline, and was there a particular reason for setting the story in that time period? Yeah, it takes place, the show takes place in the time period just after Return of the Jedi when the New Republic is trying to establish, a, you know, a, a better galaxy for everyone, but it's, it's, it's not easy. And we've seen that in other shows like Mandalorian and Ahsoka, and we just felt that for our show with the kids being lost in the galaxy, it would be a great time because there's not necessarily a big powerful force to um, save them, whether it's the, the Old Republic or even the Empire. Um, they get lost, and that's why we run into pirates. So it's kind of like a lawless time. Yeah, it's kind of a lawless, chaotic time, which is a very dramatic time for a group of kids to get stranded. Yeah, and then we were also working with John Favreau and Dave Filoni really closely, and they had already done so much great work in developing that time period, and still yeah. are. So it was really it made awesome. sense for us to just slot in there with them yeah. as well. Um, will we see new parts of the galaxy throughout the span of the series? Any new creatures or droids? Uh, will we see uh, more parts of the galaxy and creatures and droids? Yes, many. We go to lots of different planets, um, spaceports. Yeah, it's a lot of, uh, it's, always, it's basically all new. Lots of creatures, lots yeah. of droids. Yeah, we only go to new places, I think. Yeah, we yeah. only go to new places. So yes, the answer is yes. Love it. Do you have to be a Star Wars fan or have any knowledge of the galaxy to enjoy the show? Or what do you feel what makes it relatable? you have to be a Star Wars fan to enjoy the show? I think no, and that's part of the story that we're telling is this is a group of kids that don't necessarily realize what kind of a big universe they're a part of. 
and it's only as they get lost and try to find their way home that they sort of experience the Star Wars galaxy for the first time. So yeah. in but, the same but, way. Yeah, but if you are a big fan, there's lots there for you to pick up on, and you'll be kind of ahead of the kids understanding better than they do what's going on. Kind of in that way where, you know, in a movie you're saying to the characters, like, don't go in that room because you know the danger. <laughs> yeah, but you don't have to do any homework if you don't want to before you watch the show. Tell us about casting Jude Law and what he brings to the character of Jod. Uh, casting Jude Law was so easy. Uh, <laughs> he was perfect. He's who we From always our imagined. It was easy. Yeah, it was he's, easy for us. He feels there's. We've been saying it's this funny thing where he feels like he's kind of always been in Star Wars, and we've just brought him back. Like he just captures this like roguish charm that fits perfectly within the universe, and also fits in perfectly with these four 10-year-old kids. Like, in a way, he feels like just a grown-up uh, <laughs> member of the skeleton crew as well. What did the search for the four young actors entail? How did you know when you found the perfect one to play the character you had written? Uh, it involved... Uh, so how do we find the four kids? It involved a lot of uh, watching of tapes, um, and we had this idea of four characters in our head, these sort of like archetypal kids. And the thing that was challenging for us is that we had to sort of wait till someone came in who embodied the character that we were imagining. Because so many of the kids that came in were great and were great actors. But it's this different kind of patience where you just, someone could be good and could do a good job, but they weren't quite the essence of the character that we wanted. So um, you just sort of have to be patient and hope that, you know, eventually that character is going to walk through the door. And the kids that we ended up casting brought so much more to the characters than what we thought. And we actually wrote uh, to them once they were cast, yeah. they tweaked made... things to, to match who they were as people yeah. um, so that it could sort of evolve and grow over time. Um, tell us about the production design and how it conveys the kids' journey. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, I just did the casting one. Yeah, I mean, the production design <laughs> of the show is it has to be at this. The bar is incredibly high because it's Star Wars. It has to both feel like Star Wars and just be really, really good. <laughs> like that's kind of what the yeah. Star Wars thing is 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 excellence. Yeah. Um, and we just had an amazing team. I mean, from uh, Oliver Scholl to Doug Chang and all the people at, in the Lucas Film team. Uh, and then we, you know, we got to you get to include an X-wing, but then we had to create a new pirate <laughs> ship and yeah. create these these lands, and just being able to work with the caliber of artists that we got to work with was such a a, a treat and a gift. Yeah, because the team that we're working with is so good. There's never a question about the quality being there. For us, it's about distilling it down to the story that we're telling and making sure that the things that we build and the worlds that we design are telling the right part of the story and shape the evolution of the kids, you know, getting to understand the, the galaxy that they're a part of. Okay. Last question. What do you hope viewers to experience when they watch Skeleton Crew? <laughs> I hope that people who have seen a lot of Star Wars are reminded of the first time that they got to see Star Wars um, because you get to witness these kids experiencing it all for the first time. And then for... Uh, People who are seeing it for the first time. Yeah, we, we just want the show to be fun, exciting adventure. But like the original Star Wars movies, all that adventure and stuff, there's a little bit of kind of hopefully kind of deep meaning in there just about our actual lives that's kind of keeps it from being just kind of shallow fun. Yeah. And it actually kind of feels um, meaningful. Well, thank you both.